Okay. I'll have to wait until I get into the game to see if that's good. Okay, let's start this. So I think I'm just going to start a uh, classic new game. Mm, wait, I don't want to overwrite my save data. Well, yeah, I guess I'm doing master mode then. So, the joke I alluded to is, uh, there was a TikTok. Are you aware of TikTok? Yes, it's the South by Grandfather Clock Gates every day. Um, it's a kid who's about 10, and it starts with, it starts with, uh, uh, the news. So there's a label for the character that says the news, and it says, everyone has to start working from home. And this is about the moment I realize, hey, wait a minute, this is the Chris Benoit theme. And then the next character, wrestler. And then the next one, his wife. And then the next one, his son. Now my question is, who convinced him to use that music? Because there's no way that kid is young, old enough to know the joke. I have no idea. Which, which brother was like, hey, you should use this music. It's like, okay. What? Wake up. Don't brush, put a little makeup. with the breakup. What was... We looked up the... We looked up the lyrics to that third line before, and it doesn't make... It's like... It is like, grab a brush uh, something with a shake-up. It's like, it does not make sense. Hide the scars to hide away the shake I don't know. Why did you get, like, really, like, extra staticky? Are you, like, rubbing the phone on a quilt? No. What are you doing over there? I'm doing nothing. You sure? I you... could do something if you want. Are you sure that you're not doing anything? I'm too dry now to make sound of it. Hmm. <laughs> Can you check that the audio on the stream is good? It says that it's yeah. going from this end. Let, let's keep a chitty chatty. In it. Yeah. Uh. Check it out. Feel that you can relate to this bit. Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds quite good. Oh, look at that. You have a man with his nipples. Yeah, that's right. No pants run. Oh, that's a good pose. Suck a My one thing about this is that these shorts Linker is wearing looks like a pair of bike shorts. Oh. He actually does not have nipples. In fact, the first main Nintendo character to have exposed nipples was Mario. And of course, he has those massive Italian nipples. Like, seriously, are you good over there? I can hardly hear you over the rustling and t a tussling. Uh, it sounds good on the screen. I okay. don't know. What's that? Jurassic Park. Just the first Jurassic Park? Ooh, that is a good movie. Jesus. Are you in a tent? What's going on? No! I don't even know where it's special. Maybe you hear the air I just hear like a. It sounds like a tent flapping in a hurricane. I don't, oh, jeez. Is there something wrong with this? Something wrong with my phone here? What's going on? Oh, God. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you back. I don't know what's going on with this. What the fuck? Okay, let's try that again.
Mm. Link is looking good. Tap. Uh, audio. Except. Except. Hello? Oh, wait. That should make you less hearable. Okay, there's still a little bit of rustling, but it's like at a manageable level right now. It's all, it's all clicks and whistles, man. I don't know. I don't know, like, what are you? Do you have the right mic linked up? Would it have switched the mic input? Uh, I can. Uh, go, go, go. Push the box. Link, push the box. Oh, Jesus. This, this was not the way to do this, was it? I don't remember. I haven't played this in so long. Figured it'd be good to inaugurate the Elgato software with this, uh... With this game in particular, because this is the first game that I had on the Switch. Yeah, I cannot hear him at all. Andrew, if you're watching... I I just can't hear you at all. So, I don't know. It's, I don't know if that's on my end, because, uh, let me try switching to data on my phone. Come on. Let me, let me do the thing. Let me f f flick. No, I gotta do it. I gotta do a thing. Uh, there? Maybe it's because of that. Maybe it's because I'm streaming. Taking up too much bandwidth. Alright, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I think it might have been because I was using too much bandwidth for the uh, Facebook call to be able to handle it. Well, I also switched microphones, so... Okay, yeah, you're definitely more audible. I don't know what it was, but it definitely sounded like, like, like just a tarp blowing in a tornado. Am I fucking up here? Am I, what, is there like a something I'm supposed to do? Oh goddamn! I'm an idiot. I whoa. Oh oh oh. What am I doing? What's happening? Um. Oh, actually, now that I can see it, I'm gonna pop that up there. <sighs> I'm an idiot. I watched too many challenge runs of this, and I'm like, you gotta, like, climb up a box, right? The main mechanic in this is to climb things. <laughs> <sighs> it has been way too long since I've played this. Oh. oh, here it is. Oh, it's so beautiful. So, tender I, young ass. Listen, <laughs> genuinely, like, this brings a tear to my eye. After playing, um, like, Zelda games... usually bring a tear to my eye, too. Why must you ruin my moment? <laughs> it's fine. I've seen this so many times, but it's like... Yeah. I don't, because I don't speak bottom. And there's Andrew, his cameo. I'm not greeting you, I'm informing you. <laughs> of course. But yeah, this is just, it's such, 
it's such a beautiful game and it, it just made me so happy to see on this generation them finally like turn the legend of zelda into the thing they were always trying to make something f totally just open free you know how they did it right hmm they got an entirely new team and said don't be afraid to do things differently yeah well, that was too. They also like they specifically wanted it to feel like the original in a modern engine, to the point where there's like um, at GDC they actually played a vi oh, did they get him? Okay, um, they played a video where they had actually mocked up a Breath of the Wild, uh, like NES port basically, like a, a reverse port that they had used to just kind of design things in a grid. And it's, man, it's, it, there's just so much care, so much, so much love here. Whoop. So, Apple. there is a big name title that came out for the Switch that was widely anticipated, and a subset of just shitty guys were complaining before even released because that pixel wasn't perfect. And... Mm. I have a legitimate oh, gripe with that game. Um, with uh, regards to the plot. Hmm. In that it never happened to the player. It always happened to the people the player met. Yeah, we're talking about Pokemon, right? Yeah. Like, this is a problem with a lot of... Games, well, no, compared to previous Pokemon games, like, you were always the one that found Team Rocket, that, you know, it discovered the missing fossil, that found the legendary Pokemon, and, you know, you were the one that instigated the story. Whereas in this one, it's always, you kids are too young for this. We'll, we'll go do it. Yeah, well, that, like did you, you from the story. did you play Pokemon Sun or Moon? Because that it was a problem there too, where it was like it was Lily's story more than it was yours. Yeah. And then I. That's my biggest gripe with it. It's just. That's my problem with a lot of modern games, though. Like I played Borderlands, and so much of that feels like it's not your story; it is someone else's story that you're just kind of hanging out for. Man, I, I like I like Borderlands gameplay wise, but the story it's just it's so like the, the dialogue is so juvenile and like the the story itself I just I feel so little agency because so little of it has to be me. It could be literally anybody. Like yeah. which I get it. That's what they're trying to write so that anybody can relate but it's like if you do that so much then no one can relate because there's no character to relate to that's something i like about link it's like he is just a um a blank slate but he's still got a personality and in this he has like a lot more personality than he does in most other things yeah. so Ooh, oh, oh come on come that's on what I like Yakuza games is how they handle the subject of character, personality. And for me, I, they had characters that you play as, as the protagonist, that I hated and openly hoped would die by the ends of the story. And others that you just love. Uh, Kiryu, love him. Uh, Saejima, not a bad guy. Akiyama, great guy. Some of the side characters that they've met up with, namely the cop and the former baseball player, mm -hmm. hate them. They can fucking die. Like, I hate the both of them equally. They're both terrible. Oh, God. He's coming. Oh, oh, he's coming. Oh, he's coming. He's only got a stick, but, like, that's enough right now. I have no pants and three hearts of health <laughs> sounds like me on a weekend leaving a gay bar no pants and three hearts Whoa. oh fuck oh god there's so many of them there's supposed to be like a 
Fuck. Can I lock on? Yeah, there we go. Got, oh, that a oh, there's like oh, there's like a timing to it. Oh, yeah, fuck. I never one. got the hang of this. Yeah, that give me that one. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh god. Oh god, I'm rolling. Rolling, 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 rolling. I gotta back it up. I gotta just fucking yeah, cheese it. it. Oh yeah. Back I got food, up. right? I got food somewhere. Yeah? No, don't whistle. Um this one. No. <laughs> No, don't. Uh, not the Sheikah Slate. That's not what I meant. Oh, yeah. That's not what you meant, but that's what you There get. it is. Um, oh, yeah. I need to eat. One more. One more. Okay, that I defeated all four of the robot animals when I last played. That was two years ago, and I couldn't remember how to play. Started over. Now I'm trying to steal shock arrows from a vinyl and hating my life. Yup. Yeah, that fucking shock arrow thing. You can stealth it if you want to, but it is a pain in the ass. Oh, wait, um. You can grab some shit from these guys. Yeah. That would be useful. In the morrow. People who refuse to self isolate are the same people who would refuse to. Or the same people who would hide a zombie bite. Yeah. Um, I, ret I retweeted that earlier, and my favorite part is if you go into the comments, every now and then you see somebody who's just like, who's just like, no, they're totally different. Everybody's like, oh, found them. Or her fucking, uh, why would you, why wouldn't you hide that? Do you want to just die? Oh, found you. Like, I guess there have to be people who would relate to that, but it's like, wow, why would you fucking admit that? <laughs> uh, well, disclosure, I'm high and didn't catch any of what you said. <laughs> people, people are just a little too proud that they would hide being bit by a zombie. Yeah, that is kind of fucking dumb. Like, what are you hoping will happen? You have to want to fuck things up for everyone at that point, because that's the only logical, like, outcome. Of that. Yeah, you're, you're not going to be the special one that's immune. Well, if it's like Walking Dead rules, then it doesn't even matter, because everybody's infected. Got him! Got him! Got him! Fuck you! That's not. If oh, your yeah. paddle is the shape, hey, the material, no, or the weight of an axe, you should probably not be using it as a paddle. Hey, don't kink shame. I ain't kink shaming. I'm just saying safety comes first. Hey, my ch callous and chapped ass can handle it, alright? Apparently you can't, because you just went down like a yeah, I need to... I'm just gonna go and jump into the open world in the regular one. I'm not... I'm not doing a good job of this. Oh my god, I just don't remember how to do the parrying. And like, in master mode, you have to be able to. Oh god, was I in the middle of Hyrule Castle? Oh, maybe I did finish the game. Huh. Uh... Yeah, fuck it. I'm just starting a new game. Fuck you. Me. Wait. Okay. Just had to double check that I was actually on my <laughs> account. <laughs> because Goko and Cory would be really pissed if I accidentally deleted their account. <sighs> Cory has put the most work into this. He, like, he hasn't 100%ed it, but he's, like, gotten pretty close. Which, with this, it's like, there's so much shit to do. So much shit. That's why I'm playing Assassin's Creed right now, because I'm just... I hate when a game includes a chunk of gameplay that is not 
a normal part of the gameplay. Right. And makes it something you have to do to progress the story. What's the example here? Assassin's Creed, I have to do a C battle. And I just don't do them in general because I don't like them. And you don't need to do them. Except for the one time. Well, in this particular game, you don't have to do them for material or anything. You don't really get enough to make it worth your while. And so, uh, with the other thing, with this game, I you know, have to fight this armada, and they're all just strong enough to make it not worth my while, and they're all, like, very good at what they do, and there's, like, four ships and just me. And it's just not fun. It's not fun at all. At oh, all. yeah, you were doing, like, a little bit of that when you were streaming the other day, right? Yeah. Yeah, that looked like hell. But I had no reference, so I was like, I guess it's just real hard. Okay, doing this again. He's naked. In France, a pie chart is called a camembert. Excuse me? In France, a pie chart is called a camembert. Mm. A camembert. A camembert. A camembert, yes. Hmm. Hey, Bert. <laughs> I'm gonna come in you. Real talk. What do you think are the odds that someone has? There have been multiple Berts, and not all of them are where they need to be in archives and stuff. Are you, are you implying that somebody stole Bert, took him home, and made him, made him ride their puppet? I'm saying somebody... Are you saying that Kevin Clash is that, like, got a Bert doll that's oddly sticky and stands up on its own? I'm just saying you can't keep an eye on every intern, okay? If they get in the puppet closet, who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I feel they probably don't keep them in closets. They they respect them a little more. Also, they're not puppets; they're Muppets. So, excuse my ignorance. Uh, God, did this, you know that? Uh, uh, Make anyway, my hands sweaty. Kermit, Fuck. The Kermit puppet was designed so accurately to Jim Henson's hand that when other puppeteers would puppeteer Kermit. Uh, in Jim's place, they had to wear gloves. Wow. Yeah. Um, Bob Bergen, the the current voice actor of Porky Pig, he he has a story where he was at a party that Jim Henson was at, and Jim had Kermit with him, and so he was going around doing the Kermit thing, right? Uh-huh. And at one point, Bob Bergen comes up, and um, out of excitement and out of love, he's like, "Oh my God, I'm such a fan! Do you?" Could can I try Kermit on? And then Jim made a face and threw Kermit was like, it's kind of like asking to be my child's proctologist, don't you think? <laughs> uh, Holy you shit! Know what voice I wish I could do, but I'm livid that I can't even come close. Hmm. Dan Housen. Yeah, I've been kind of like <laughs> listening to him. Like, there's like. There's like some funky stuff he's doing there. I, wrestlers have such have like really interesting stuff that you can um, analyze for voiceover. Like some some of the tricks that they do, especially because like they have to be like live on the like the dynamic mic there. Um, they got they got to be big and boisterous. I it's it's really interesting. I'm, I MJF has been really impressing me. What really impressed me was when um, Jake the Snake showed up on AEW for the first time and did that whole promo at Cody. Uh-huh. That was that was an amazing performance. And even with his like really gravelly, like torn up voice, it's like, oh my god, I got chills. That was fantastic. 
I have to ruin the moment <laughs> hmm. with a uh, tweet from at F Train. Okay. You, you, Laffy Taffy. Me, sophisticated. Laughter Tafter. <laughs> The one I was. After, give me the news. I got a bad case of cherry chew. I always liked. Um, my favorite of that meme has always been. Uh, a you, Steven Universe. I, an intellectual, Stevenson University. Uh, Steven Universe ended. Somebody on Friday. I, uh... Yeah. <laughs> like, and people were like, nah, he, he believes in the power of healing crystals. He is a healing crystal. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's um, a joke. I don't know. Did you watch any Steven Universe? I have never, no. I would say watch it. It's like, it, the first few seasons are definitely like more comedy and stuff, but like, it is genuinely really funny and they get I into am- some hard, like, shit. Like,. It's it's I'm told some that amazing I stuff. Watch that and uh, what's the other thing called? Uh, Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls is great. Gravity Falls is a lot shorter, so I'd say start with that. I think it's only th- two, three seasons long. And it's legally unofficially connected to Rick and Morty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Justin Roiland did a bunch of voices for it, and I I'm not shocked if uh. They've canonized each other. Yeah. Uh, but not officially, legally, technically. Did I not grab... No, I did grab the axe. Um, yeah, no, Gravity Falls, very, very, very good. And um, it, it kind of runs into some problems later on, but uh, it's still a pretty solid self-contained story and now steven universe is too um steven universe is like six seasons long with a movie but you know what i really want to watch again that i haven't watched in like two years what's that over the garden wall yeah that was another one from around the beginning of steven universe and when gravity falls was around god it's that that one so it's just gorgeous gorgeous uh, music animation yeah. everything it's so so good uh, uh, somebody suggested it as a Halloween like October November kind of show yeah that might have been Jenny Nicholson I don't know if you watch her stuff no I think it was somebody on Frederator okay yeah it's a no it is it's it's really good and it's like it's hard to find kid appropriate stuff that is actually like genuinely scary and that it, that yeah. definitely qualifies. I would argue that are you afraid of the dark was it could, it could definitely get scary but it was uh it was definitely mostly campy because very few of those kids could act. Yeah, there was one episode that fucked me up as a kid. Uh Dead Man's Float. No, no, I not... liked that one. That's it a good one, one, but it's got it's get... it's the design of the fucking monster in Dead Man's Float that's fucked up. Yeah. It's just a bloody skeleton. Yeah, and it was a lot more fucked up than they usually did. But no, the one with the computer virus that locked a kid in the school and he had to escape the school within an hour. I don't think I saw that one. So the virus pulls off its glove and its hand is like an old like 10 pin connector you know oh and that's scary now uh, here's the fucked up part he's gonna upload himself into the kid so that he can escape into the real world uh. and so he like pins the kid's hand down and his palm is the port oh wait connector. a minute i do remember this I, you just see him, that like, was a, are you afraid of the dark? Yeah. 
Oh no, that was that was. Me- I remember having like nightmares about that because like the yeah. ten pin connector, it looks so alien when you're a kid and you haven't done anything with computers, and yeah, it's they like, didn't, like they could have just like put down a fake like hand with one cobbled out of a computer to like a swish, but no, they made it look like scar tissue. Yeah, and it like the ten pin. It just looks like ten fat syringes coming at him. Oh. God. Awful. That one, that one and the pinball one were the ones that fucked me up as a kid. The pinball oh, one. I, yeah, the, like, Mall becomes a giant pinball game. I don't... It sounds yeah. vaguely familiar. A lot of no, stuff no, no, that no. goes about. Not, the, not that one. The, the comic book one. Where the blue... Uh, the yellow and blue jester from the comic book comes up and, like, spits goo everywhere. Goo. This like blue viscous gel goo. Goo. Okay, that's zoom. That's crouch. Okay. Let's see if I can. Well, I would send you a picture, but you're on you on on your phone right now. Yeah. Um, I'll have to like remember it. Hold on, I'm gonna reassign these now that I remember how this works. So, do um, this one for. Man, I was minute. such a Nickelodeon kid. This like, one, Nickelodeon was that. my shit. And then, yeah, there we go. Nickelodeon was the shit, man. There was some good stuff on there. I still, I still will mark out for uh, Ren and Stimpy. Because I actually, actually, I have, check it out, uh, when Toys R Us was closing, I got a set of, like, Ren and Stimpy figures. Check it out. These are, so, they're super high quality. They're, like, really well put together. Um, I got Ren, Log, uh, uh, I have Stimpy on here somewhere. So there's Stimpy. Stimpy. And then I also have... Uh, Mr. Horse and Powdered Toast Man, but those are off in a drawer somewhere. Nice. Are you old enough to remember Eureka's Castle? What was that? Eureka's Castle. Eureka's Castle. Or, uh, there was a show. I can never remember the name, but it started with this guy, like, walking through the woods with a guitar. He crawls through this hollow log and comes out in this, like, studio set. To look like the middle of the woods. What the fuck? Like, yeah, he would play songs and do this and that. It was kind of like a Mr. Rogers esque kind of show, but out in the woods. Huh. And uh, I can never remember the name of that show, but uh, one of the things he did was pretended to be his own brother. And like they did this pop up from behind a wall, uh, Grand Old, no, not Grand Old, I forgot. Hee haw, kind of. Oh. Like, cornfield bit. Oh. Uh, was the that? One thing I can remember best was him yelling, I'm the king of the castle and you're a dirty rascal. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. Uh, I can... Or what about the Singing Elephant Show? Singing Elephant Show? I think it was called The Elephant Show. And it had like two women and an old guy that would sing songs. And the end of every episode would be like, skidamarinky dinky dink, skidamarinky do. Oh, I, I remember. I love you. I remember that song. I, and they I, would do a little dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the show super well. Oh, this would have been a long time before you. Yeah. You know what oh. I want to try? Mm. I want to try doing. Um, oh, shit. What's the word? Stop motion animation, but like the way they used to on Sesame Street back in the day with the glasses. The glasses? Yeah, there was like shot glasses and drinking glasses that they did stop motion animation on. Oh, what, like a painted thing? Yeah. Okay. I. And it was, and it was like. Mm-hmm. Man, I remember those so clearly, and nobody else does. 
I, it might have been before my time. Only clips I found were like extremely old clips. Yeah. I mean, it's intriguing. I, I fucking Sesame Street. I mean, it is like kids shit, but it's like it's really good. Pretty much anything Jim Henson did had at least some level of artistry to it. That show was like the Adult Swim of kids TV. Yeah. Do you remember Kablam? Yes, I remember Kablam. That shit was great. Fucking, um, fucking, oh, uh, what was it? The fucking superheroes sketch? Yeah. Um. He's super strong and super naked. <laughs> he has the power, or the power to melt. <laughs> mm. Oh, and there was, um. Oh, uh, what was it, Zeblork and Oog, or whatever, the, like, caveman and alien? No, Prometheus and Bob. Prometheus and Bob, that's it. God, it's like you don't remember your Greek stories. Listen. And your cavemen. Um. Can't believe you said such racial slurs, by the way. Uh, hmm? Oh, no. Zig, and Oog. I don't speak the that, language. That, that's so offensive. Um, that's that's speak, that's racist, literally. Like, yep, that's racist against aliens. Racist against cavemen. I can't believe I made a racisms. How do you think? On the my stream, I already got canceled. How do you think the flare guns of Nerf Gun Six are gonna feel? Here you call somebody a Zarkon. Dude, are you allowed to say... Are you allowed to say that N-word? I don't know if I'm yes. comfortable with that. I, I'm allowed. I may, I may have to remove your mod status, dude. Because I'm gay, so it's allowed. Ah. Is that the rule? I like the... I, I, I think this was on my stream. I like the Jeff Foxworthy rule. Yeah. Of who you're allowed to make fun of. You're not allowed to make fun of someone unless you are one. So. And I are one. Yeah, and I are one. Yeah, so. that was that was on your stream because this is the first time I've been able to get you on my stream outside of the chat. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, that's uh, my rule for who I can make fun of. So I can make fun of fat guys, white guys, gay guys, bi guys, pan guys. Guys with tiny, I mean, large dicks. Mmm, yes. Yes, definitely. Checks out. You ever been running and you, you trip over your dick? <laughs> That's. <laughs> Hashtag relatable. <laughs> That's what, like, <laughs> I have a theory as to why old people walk so slow, specifically old men. It's because I've noticed that as I got older, some other parts of me have hung lower. Oh no. And so my theory is they're just trying to avoid stepping on them. <sighs> you gotta make adjustments, man. Hey, get, getting old is better than the alternative, you know? Quarantine would be a wild time for me to realize I'm non binary, right? Ha 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 ha. Right? <laughs> right? You know who I feel? Uh, really bad for right now is the trans people who aren't safe being out at home. Like, yeah. And they don't have other... God, Um. so Coco reads a lot from the subreddits r slash uh, relationships and r slash oh, am I the asshole. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but it's like so many of them lately are like I have this really big problem with this person and now we're trapped together in a quarantine what do yeah. I do? And it's like, well, you could have done something months ago, but like now, yeah, you're just gonna Fuck. fucking be awkward at best. And yeah, it's always a little, uh, like, whenever I read the am I the asshole things, it's always, if you're the boyfriend, the answer is almost always yes. Even when the boyfriend tells the story. Yeah. But, there's, but we did find the one Am I the Asshole where the girlfriend was the asshole. 
guy's 19 year old brother was gay or no 16 year old brother because he's underage was gay and his parents kicked him out not because he was gay but because the neighbors saw them kissing his boyfriend and so they were ashamed and kicked him out so the poster the 26 year old brother of the 16 year old told him to come live with him he had a spare room no problem his girlfriend, however, hates kids to a point where she actively goes out of her way to avoid them. She freaked the fuck out that he gave the spare room in his apartment to his brother because she didn't want his brother around. She does not live with her boyfriend, so like, it's not affecting her living arrangement at all. So he starts getting texts from her roommate saying he's wrong, he's an asshole. I'm like, no, the dude's brother got kicked out for being gay, and you're pitching a fit. You're wrong here. Yeah, no, it's, it was real messed up. That I Like, we go through, like, a few of them a day and, like, just work out our verdict, and we pretty much always agree. Although, I like someone distilled all of our slash relationships, which is guy posting. Uh, my girlfriend chews weird. How do I make her fucking stop? Um, and the fucking girls are always like, uh, my guy's a really great boyfriend, you know, really supportive, really cool, but, uh, he said he's gonna kill my whole family and he already killed my dog. Uh, how do I apologize to him? It's always like, God, I'm so sorry for these women in these horrible gaslighting relationships where they really think there's any possibility they might be an asshole or they may be in the wrong when just such fucked up stuff is being done to them. Do you know what the worst one I've seen was? Hmm. And, like, the guy was completely blind to how he could have been the asshole in this. Mm -hmm. Uh, His wife had been married before and the previous husband died uh, yeah, before he came along. The previous husband and her got close on Valentine's Day. That's how they, you know, came to, you know... Oh, God, to, this one. You continue yeah. for so the stream can hear, but oh, oh, this was a bad one. Yeah, and so on their first Valentine's together, the new husband, you know, got her a gift and she was like, you didn't know, I would really appreciate if you didn't do this again. Valentine's is special to me and, you know, him. Please don't, you know. And so he was like, all right, fine. A couple of years pass, they get married. And he's like, surely by now she's, uh... Just forgotten. Yeah. Just forgotten her, her, her dead husband. Yeah. So she, uh... Or he buys her flowers and she freaks out. And he grabs her ex-husband's wedding ring out of her drawer and bashes it with a hammer. Yeah, it just smashes it flat. And then, uh... He's like, I know, dick move, but I was in a panic. Dick move, that's what he said. And he, like... None of her family's talking to him, not her. And he just wants everything to go back to the way it was. I'm like, nah, dude. It's not happening. You crossed a line. And the worst part is, in one of the comments later, he was talking about how, um, she, her, he finally got in contact with her brother, and he's like, I'm gonna help her pick up some stuff. She is terrified of you now. Uh, this is not happening. And he's just like, I'm so mad. The only thing I have control over is her stuff, so I might just throw out the ring, even though she said she still wants it. It's like, the fact you said control, first off, and then, regardless of that, the fact that the one thing she's telling you not to do, you're still going to do, and you think that this is going to end well? Yeah. Oh, there was a hilarious one that was like, um... Uh, I tried to kiss my interviewer. Do you think I ruined my chances? <laughs> Part of me wants to, like, troll that thread sometimes. Oh, there's definitely a few that feel like they're trolls. That They'll probably see you, see through you, though, because, like, it's, it's, 
surprisingly hard to uh, make something believable enough. But what would be? Let's let's hear your pitch. What would be your uh, "Am I the asshole?" or your "R slash relationships" that you would try and troll with? Actually, I have a legitimate one now that I think about it. Oh. Actually, I know I'm the asshole because I refer. Like, do you ever have an inner voice that says shit you really wish it wouldn't? Oh, all the time. <laughs> like super inappropriate stuff. And you're oh. Just like, oh, totally. Yeah. And you're like ashamed of it yourself. Yeah, you're just so, like, that's, it's just wrong, but I can't not think it. Your brain just pops things in your head, and you're like, that's not, where did, that did not come from a good place. What is, what's going on here? We gotta get yeah, this shit in order, guys. I had one of those moments when I was talking, like, I didn't say it to her, but I had one of those moments when I was talking to a girl I was trying to see. Mm -hmm. She had twin daughters who were infants. And she uh, once told me that she oh no. once told me she had painted their toenails different colors so she could tell them apart. And I was like, oh, that's cute. Well, a couple of weeks later, she's telling me that her kids, her babies, were in the hospital with pneumonia, and one was doing okay, but the other was very much not doing okay. And the first thought that crossed my mind was not, oh god, that's terrible. Is there anything I could do? Do you need anything? It was. Well, at least you won't have to paint their toenails different colors to tell them apart anymore. Oh, Andrew. I, I didn't say it. I hated myself for it. I'm not laughing. That's just what crossed my mind. That's... Um, Kyle Kinane, he's a comedian. A lot of people know him as the voice, the, like, announcer for uh, Comedy Central, like, late night and stuff. But, um... He has a, a a bit where he's like, the things that make you a good person, it's not doing something nice for somebody on their birthday. It's not giving somebody flowers. Those are planned. You can think those out. It's what you do in the moment that makes you a good person or a bad person. Like, maybe your coworker, just hypothetically, maybe your coworker... Uh, is making a sandwich for lunch and they take a long time they slice tomatoes they make it real nice they got great bread and as soon as they are finished 15 minutes uh making the sandwich they immediately trip and spill it all over the floor and what do you as a good person say you say oh i'm so sorry that happened that's so terrible what do i say in this moment when i could show some human compassion would you make that sandwich with fumblebee tuna Did you use mayonnaise or Miracle Whoops? <laughs> I hate Miracle Whip. I haven't I, had it in forever, those. but I remember enjoying it. It's sweet and smooth. That's and I had it. I had it as a kid, so maybe I just liked it because it was sweet. If, if you use it with fruit to make like fruit salad, passable. Oh, uh, that's like that's like more of a southern thing, right? The whole mayonnaise or similar for fruit salad no that's pretty common uh, oh okay if you insist I mean, you could also use yogurt did like, i actually open that chest i did not open like, that chest i gotta go back <laughs> fuck you could also use yogurt um instead which i prefer to do but okay we actually have a bunch of greek yogurt that we got for smoothies but um if we have some left over i'll probably do that all you do is just cube up or dice up your vegetables and toss it in, yeah. You know. Vegetables. Because, I mean, that's, no, that's as absolutely a, like, upper class thing because it's a Waldorf salad. I'm sorry, vegetables. I thought you said fruit salad, and I was like... Yeah, no, 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 a Waldorf salad is a fruit salad. It's veg or fruit and nuts mixed with mayonnaise. I... It's like apples, raisins, and pecans. I, okay, <laughs> man, listen, I love food, I love being able to make good food, but I can't get behind some, some culinary ideas. Let's see, it's, uh, fucking... yeah, yeah, fuck, how do I, 
Celery, like apple, lettuce. walnuts, and grapes dressed in mayonnaise. Traditionally served on a bed of lettuce. Oh, wait, I've seen pictures of that. Yeah, that's Waldorf salad. Waldorf salad. In fact, hold on. You can add chicken to it the, and make it. Oh, yeah. Chicken salad. In fucking Fievel Goes West, there's that, like, scene where he's, like, sneaking up and he hears the cat's, like, evil plans and they're eating Waldorf salad. If you add chicken to it, you have what's basically Arby's chicken salad. That actually sounds kind of good. See, that's the thing. As soon as you add a protein, I'm like, oh, well, maybe, actually. You know what uh, I tried that I was skeptical of at first, but now I'm a convert? Okay. Mayonnaise instead of butter when making grilled cheese. Oh, yeah. That shit's amazing. It works so much better, and you don't have to fucking, like, soften the butter to spread it. We have a griddle. A double-sided griddle. Fuck. So we just, like, perfect grilled cheese mm. every time. Fuck, that sounds amazing. I just use cast iron, but it's, perfect yeah. Perfect grilled cheese, perfect quesadillas. Uh, you go to Taco Bell, get a burrito, boom. Toasted burrito. I mean, you can just uh, tell them to toast it, and they'll do it in theirs. Yeah, but by the time you get it home, it's all softened and squishy. That's Whereas fair. Throw it in your own griddle. Crunchy, toasted, delicious. Double toasted, technically. Mm. It's amazing. That does sound good. It's like we inherited it from my in laws' parents. Yeah. And uh, I swear to God, if it ever breaks, I'm buying a new one. It's worth every penny. Like, I use it more than almost anything else in the kitchen short of my cast iron skillets <sighs> yeah i just uh, i'm i'm kind of sad speaking of oh. like food devices my uh my pizza stone broke i've never got the hang of pizza stones i just prefer to use a pan um I, I i don't like neapolitan pizzas anyway i mean i i, I use I them like, i like Straight up, just regular crust at Pizza Hut or, you know, Fair Little enough. Caesars. I like just a straight up cheap pizza. I just... I don't, I don't I, like dusty pie crusts. Like, that, that makes me feel like I need to wear gloves and uh, nails on a chalkboard. Like, negative feeling. Like, reverse ASMR. Fair and enough. Fair enough. I hate it. It, it sets off like... It, just a cringe device in me. I... I, like. I know, man. I make a delicious pizza. But I fucking... A little... Just a little drip of sauce broke through the crust. And that was just enough to fucking snap the fucker in two. And that's like the third pizza stone I've gone through for exactly that reason. I just don't like them. I like cooking my pizza if I'm making it at home in an uh, oven, like normal on a pan, but then saving it for the next day and then reheating it in a skillet slice by slice. Ooh. Reheated pizza. Egg. Or even just fucking cold pizza, man. No, 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 no. You know what's great? And I I've swear to God. Okay, okay. You end this, but I have, I have a revelation for food. Have you ever reheated it in a skillet? Uh, a couple times, yeah. It's it's it so good. It is crunchy. It is perfectly heated. It's more like a the way it's the like, like it's fresh from the oven. when you make like the Chicago style and it gets that like crispy crust on the sides, but like yeah. not deep dish. Yeah, it's crunchy without being burned. Um, but here's a revelation. All right. If you, you haven't tried it, I swear to God, I'm not kidding. And this is just a familial thing. Everybody in my family does this. Spaghetti, ice cold, straight out of the fridge. Like, a good spaghetti that you made and everything. The uh, next day, don't reheat it. Just fucking eat it right out of the container. Ice cold. It's so delicious and refreshing. Yeah. Holy oh, shit. Right there, you know Earth Balance Butter, right? What's that? You know Earth Balance Butter, right? Yes, yes. Have you ever tried their peanut butters? 
Peanut butter. They make peanut butter? Oh, yeah. This one's peanut butter and coconut blend. Ooh. That's nice. There's a, there's a hint of unsweetened coconut in it. Mm. And it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the good it shit. Is. But it's a little, like, no, slightly drier probably. than your average uh, one, right? Yep. So I got really high the other night. Made a big mouthful of it. Mm. And, uh, I gotta drop some of this oh, cobbling shit. I don't need any of it. Was that a bad decision? I'm I, I, I'm lucky enough. I'm lucky enough to be at an age where I don't have to worry about bad decisions with my digestion. But I'm getting there. I'm starting to get like acid reflux sometimes. I hate it. Better than your roommate. Well, yeah, I the the dietary stuff we gotta do to make sure that Corey doesn't just absolutely die after dinner is a uh, strain. It's difficult, man. I have to basically make him another dinner because he can't do like garlic or onions or like just anything with flavor, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and it sucks. He he. I can tell he'd love to try and eat it, but he's just going to hate it. Because even the stuff that he can eat, for the most part, is still going to, like, get him pretty bad. Damn. I'm glad I'm not like that. I'm yeah. Just yeah, man, I see so many people with, like, food allergies and digestion issues, and I'm just like... I'm glad that that's, like, one thing I don't need to deal with. I My... Fucking all of the caverns of my head are fucked up, but I can at least eat what I want, whatever I want to. Have you ever tried uh, powdered peanut butter? Uh, you've told me about it. Can you just add water. Oh wait, yes. yeah. One time I was at your place and I tried it. Yeah, I fucking love that stuff. Yeah. It's surprisingly good. It's definitely, it's very, very different. Um, fuck, how do you... There's like a trick when you're in the air, you can like... Uh, you need, what? Nope. You need shield? Shit. Just, hold on, there's like a trick here where you can like flip your shield down. Or I think you've got to be like... Yeah, there it is. And you can use that as a... Let's see if I do this correctly. Yeah, you can use that as a double jump. Okay. Um, sorry, distracted by the, the focus of the stream, which is a game. <laughs> I've been, like, fucking... I've been getting through this, but, like, man. I feel like a lot of it is just muscle memory. That's me in life. I'm getting through this, but, man, I feel like a lot of it is just muscle memory. Man, you just let things go, and sometimes it works out, and sometimes you're just like, what, what happened? I've been checked out for the last, like, two days. I have driven from Savannah to Charlotte and not remembered the drive. Yikes. Like, I, I arrive and I'm like, oh yeah, I was driving. And I'm like, I am terrified of the mayhem I may have caused. God, I, he's a shitty dude, but Louis C.K. has a bit where he was high from, like, modern weed, and he was just like, I drove after, and af at one point I realized, oh, shit, I have not looked out of the windshield in 15 minutes. There's a whole other, like, field of responsibility I'm ignoring. That's fair, dude. He's very abrasive. And now we know he's also fucking pile of human trash. Yeah. Like, uh, I heard him on Pandora. Mm -hmm. I had a 2000s comedy station. Hold on. And, uh, the one joke he told that would come up was trying to get his kid to eat. Oh, yeah. And the, I don't like 
white chicken sentence. And he's like, I don't care, just eat it. Shove it up your ass, just eat it. I'm like, that's not funny. Like, that's abusive. Man, like, you're a parent. This is your job. Yep. I mean... I don't know. I guess I can't say, because I am definitely not a parent... And you are, so you, you probably know much better than I. But you help with parenting of a certain person, though. Yeah, and I did, like, do quite a lot to raise, like, my three youngest siblings. Um, yeah, so... You know that that's just going to traumatize them, and next thing you know, when they're 18, you're going to find a video of them, like, shoving food up their ass. Listen, like, we, we all wonder... Can you taste the other way? And the answer is, is up no. to you to find out. I'm not letting you know. You have to find out for yourself, kids. Write a passage. But, like, you go to find your kid, like, Alexa Danger shoves an entire 20 piece bucket of KFC up her ass one piece at a time. 20? And... The whole 20, dude? Come on, stop at five. The rest, that's good eating. Well, she got it all in drumsticks. Oh, those are the easy ones. They're already beveled. Mm, I love your 11 herbs and spices. 11? I thought it was 17. I think it's 12. Is it 12? It's 23. It's no, Dr. Pepper's 23. Yeah. 31, as Baskin. I always thought Dr. Pepper was just a spiced cherry cola. I looked it up. There's like so much shit in there. There's like licorice, amaretto, fucking blueberry. Yeah. Blueberry. Well, a guy just working a soda jerk station just jerked all of it in there. Basically, yeah. And it was like, it's gotta make something good. Yeah, if you want. I kind of wish I had that kind of optimism for like, I'm just gonna mix all these chemicals together. It's gotta make something helpful. I mean, shit. At that point. Wasn't that the point when, like, they still had cocaine and coke? Maybe. Do you know what drink I want to buy, but I can't find it anywhere? And, like, I shouldn't have it anyway because diabetes, but I want it so bad, and I'm, like, freaking out that I can't find it. I'm going to say cheer wine. No, that's available everywhere. This is the South. Okay. Um, get, can I get a hint? Uh... The brand sounds like a measurement that an old person would give in relation to a grasshopper. Oh, God damn it! I'm going to know it as soon as you say it now, because that's very specific. And I'm just like, my brain is just <laughs> like, yeah, you, you know what this one is, stupid. <laughs> try it, try, try. Can't. Never tried. You give it up. Yeah, what do you got? Knee high peach soda. Mmm. Have you ever had it? Uh, I have not. I've seen it at a Cracker Barrel or two. It tastes more like a peach than a fucking peach. Really? I've it tried. Is, I think I've tried a couple so of the knee high drinks, but I. They're good. I have not tried out the peach one. It, but with me, it's always. Peach always is like. You say Cracker thick. Barrel has it? It's always too syrupy. I'm pretty sure the Cracker Barrel in town here has it. Uh, the peach is not. It is worth trying out. Okay. It is so good. But I like looked on Amazon and they had a 12-pack of cans going for $30. Yeah. That's like, the thing, is if you don't mind paying, you can get whatever drinks you want, but... I'm not paying that much. Yeah, they're it ain't cheap. Worth. They're not... That's more than double their normal price. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, fuck, for a time, like, they brought back uh, Crystal Pepsi for a little time, and, like, you could get them, but it would be, like, 15 bucks for a six-pack of bottles. And it's like, I don't... I don't know if I cared that much. It just tastes like Pepsi. Well, you know, like, to water at least uh what i wound up doing was switching over to a water cooler 
Yeah, we did too. We got one now. Cost effective, right? Yeah. Well, at first we were like getting the actual branded water bottles, and it's like where this you is... paid like twelve dollars a jug, and yeah, yeah, uh, it's six if you like bring it back. But then it's like you find the glacier clear or whatever dispenser, and it's like oh, like dollar seventy five, perfect. Yeah, and you just buy like reusable caps, and or if you Reusab- can't do that, yeah, you can get them on Amazon. Um, reusable caps. I gotta look into that because I've just been using Saran Wrap. Saran Wrap. Yeah, that's what a lot of first timers do. Uh, do I you mean, have screw on lid or do you have like the kathunk lid? The kathunk. All right. Good. What you want to do is look up reusable caps, and oftentimes they'll come with like a handle, even that goes over the neck to help you carry it a little easier. Okay, that'd be useful. Yeah, it's. I've got two of those and a crap ton of reusable caps that I use. Um, okay, link me got, to whichever one you you would like for that. I'll trust your opinion. Alright. But yeah, we have like three jugs that we rotate out now. And they're, they're good. They're really good. Yeah. Uh, and five gallons of water for two bucks and... Do you, is yours a cooler, or is it a dispenser? It's a cooler. It's got the hot and the cold. Oh, is that not the best? Like, when you want just a cup of tea? Yeah, well, what the thing with me is, like, um, like tea is good, but then doing voiceover, one of the secrets is tea is not good for, uh, for when you're, like, gonna do stuff because tea can dry your throat out. So the trick is you basically just make hot water with all the fixins of tea. So you hot water, lemon, and honey... It'll warm your throat up and hydrate you and, like, do all the soothing and stuff. Yeah. So just being able to, like, immediately, like, just honey, lemon in a mug and then just hot water straight out of the thing. And it's it's not, like, boiling like a kettle will do. So it's, like, right. it, it's, it's drinkable. It's steam, yeah. It's so good. I love it. Oh. I, I'm very happy with this, especially because, like, we were buying the, like, Walmart bottles for, like, four bucks for a little less than, or a little more than five so gallons. Trash. Yeah, it was so, like, ineffective, and I, I felt so shitty about that, and now it's like, we do, like, I guess I'm throwing out a little bit of saran wrap every now and then, but if I get the reusables, then it's like, I won't be messing anything up. sounds like let's be real that sound they make is terrifying isn't it like that blub, 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 blub. oh i kind of like it i don't know it sounds like when i like take a really bad shit sure <laughs> i have like the sound my guts make afterwards like has your stomach ever made that sound? not like you your butt but like your stomach at least a couple times yeah but the um i don't know it gives it like personality i feel personality that's what we're gonna go with personality it can be a neutral term yeah man butterfly pea flower tea forgot we bought that swords i just always i just go with like an irish breakfast tea it's just like no, no, no this is a magic tea it changes color Ooh. It starts off this rich purple, gorgeous color. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when you add a little bit of citrus, it changes color completely mm. to uh, sky. Or no, no, it starts off this deep blue, like almost purple. But then when you add citrus, it turns uh, bright purple. It's worth looking up the uh, reactions this stuff does because it is so cool. Okay, is it like an herbal? It's just the one flower. Okay. Um, it's like butterfly pea flower. Hmm. You just make a tea of it and then add citrus and it will shift colors dramatically. Hmm. 
Uh, you can use it as a die, and then before you add the fixative to keep the color the same, you can uh, actually dab lemon juice on it, and it will potentially keep that color, or you can add the fixative so that it stains that color, and then when you actually splash lemon juice at the shirt, it will actually still shift color until the lemon juice is washed away. Oh, cool. It's not easy to do, but if you can pull it off, it's worth it. Okay. I sent you the lids that nice. we have. Now, I will say, when you go to put them on, just go ahead and cut the neck, the, like, peel-off neck first. Because mm. it's kind of got the same kind of neck as, like, a milk jug, where you peel that little tab and then yep, pull yep. It's got a thick version of that that does not like to peel at all. And you'll wind up having to cut at it with, like, a pocket knife or an exacto knife. Well, I got it when we cleaned it out. You're supposed to clean at least ours out every three months, and it specifically no, 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 says to... I'm talking about the, the actual reusable caps here. Oh, okay. The, they're supposed to, when you go to remove the old cap to refill it and put it back on, it's supposed to have, like, a peel on it like you would do on a jug of milk to, like, relieve, to loosen the lid. Right. And it's very hard to cut that off. So yeah. I cut it before I put it on because it's reusable. Right. The cuff has no purpose there. So I just cut the cuff off all of them to begin with. Okay. Because yeah, they are a pain in the ass. They're sturdy and thick and they just make it a pain. You do have the like snap on lid, not a screw one, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the one that, yeah, like, fine. has the peel yeah, situation to it. Yeah, then you should be fine with that. Okay, so cool. It's not screw one. I mean, uh, it supposedly fits on screw ones, but I've not tried it, and I wouldn't want to run that risk personally. It's actually not the first reusable lid we bought. I just really disliked the first one because it uh, had a mold problem. Mm. And yeah, I'm not like, into that. It was like a silicone one with a little flappy thing, and it you couldn't transport the like water home with it. So I don't like that, yeah. This one you can. You just put the lid on, and it's got... I don't know how to explain it. Um, what it is is a it's kind of like you know those sport bottles you can buy with the straw and the little cap for the straw that's attached huh. it's like that but inside out so that the straw goes outside the cap oh and that's what pops up when you uh, push it down on the spike in your cooler and right. you just pop it back into place. Okay. And, uh, I like it a lot. Uh, I don't even need to do this. I can just... Whoop! Gah! Ah, crap. <laughs> I almost did it. Yeah, I saw you almost do it. Uh, I saw Speedrunner do that. <laughs> but they actually, like, succeeded. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I can do this. You just gotta... You hold the shield, and you... Whoop! Gah! Ooh, ooh, ah. Ah, I went too far. <laughs> Hold on. This is the worst speed run I've ever done, dude. We're already about an hour in, and I haven't even seen Ganon. Ah, oh, fuck. You suck. Listen. I'm trying my best. My You're family. My family needs to eat these rupees. You're, you're trying, alright? You're trying my last nerve. Well, or... land's sake, Charles, I can't. I can't continue on like this. Whereas my mother would say, uh, if you said I'm trying, she would say very. Hmm? If you were like, I'm trying, my mom would just be like, very. Hmm. Don't stop me. I might turn around, drop my knees, and propose to you at this point. What? 
don't stalk me. I might turn around and try to put my knees and compose to you at this point. Don't, don't what? Stalk me. It's a friend of mine tweeting me. Fuck it, Iggy. I don't give a shit anymore. Stonk? Fuck is stonk? Higgins. I, uh, I can't exist in this world, man. I am a simple person. I'm trying my best. <laughs> I can't keep up with shit anymore. Can I offer you an egg in these troubling times? Please. Please and thank you, Daniel DeVito. <laughs> Laughter tafter. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep up with that one. That that's that's fun for the whole family. Cody is short for Codison. Mm. You take selfies with your ass on the sink. I mean you might I I don't think I have the dexterity. Listen, he was hungry. Had to feed. You so fat it takes you three trips to haul ass. Well, can't deny that one. You got me there. You know where I really want to live? Like, have you ever watched like a movie or a TV show from the fifties and noticed how? their mundane homes were like door frames seven feet tall yeah like, like i watched a movie the other night um i wish i could remember the name of it right now but it was like that this just massive fucking home and it was some tiny apartment by the standards of the story the bad sea that's what it was called and look that up it's in the public domain uh Mm-hmm. So it's on YouTube. But it's just this massive house. Like, giant. I loved the aesthetic and wanted to live in these homes. Because they were just gorgeous, gorgeous looking places. These homes are like the 40s and 50s with pillars in the living room. And yeah. Like, just this Americana that I don't think ever really existed. Oh no, it's a movie set. Like, well, it's I mean, a, it's probably not. a it's probably a mansion in fucking L.A. It might be because these were just like huge doorways is what caught my attention the most. But like the way the camera both made the room look massive and foreshortened at all times, mm-hmm. like it was pulling everything from like compressing it all down, and you could tell it was massive. But the camera made it feel small. Yeah. I fucking loved how that worked, and I want to live in that aesthetic. Uh, or like commercials. You ever get high and watch a commercial, and you're like, God, I don't want to buy that product, but I want to live in that world. Yeah. Like, every time I see a commercial that does that to me, it's always... Like, I couldn't think of a place to compare it to, because I'd never been anywhere like those commercials. Mm-hmm. But it's very much like the parts of Ballard I visited. Like, okay. Like, very much like the parts of Ballard. I, I think visited. you'd also dig like Fremont, which is pretty close to Ballard. I liked Ballard. I liked Kirkland. I liked Queen Anne. Um, lower Queen Anne, personally. Upper was fine. I just preferred lower. Um. It's just like a lot of really neat stuff that I really enjoyed. And like that's the kind of Oh my god. This is this count the the meat. Oh and I need fish. Fuck, I need a fish. The plural of fish is fish. 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 A microfish. That's what Uh, we call a sardine in the old country. Oh, apparently Vince McMahon is pissed. 
have to start with that Brody Lee spot. Sweet. Well, he can stay pissed. He can. He can miss everything cool and die angry. Yeah, the one with um, the steak and the sneezing. Mm-hmm. He is livid over that. That was like a direct like. Well, the, dig at the him, right? The guy out for eating first. No one's sure of a like reference specifically to Vince for that, but the sneezing one absolutely. And it's well done. Like I, I like the new direction they're taking the Dark Order with this second reboot of the group. Um, mm. Because yeah. he was not the original. He wasn't. He didn't want to be. From the reports I've read, he was not the original choice. It was originally going to be Marty, uh, Marty Skrull. And uh-huh. so they were building the Dark Order around that mentality. And so they've kind of taken it towards a sort of organized crime cult now with this new iteration of Brody Lee in the Exalted One role. Oh, okay. I still haven't seen... I've been meaning to watch the most recent Dynamite. Oh, so you haven't seen the, the promo yet, then? No. With the sneezing and the steak? Oh. That match was great, by the way. He just stares down the camera like he never seems to break eye contact with the hard cam. Ooh. And my one gripe is I don't like the setup for his new uh, clothesline finisher. Okay. You saw it when he debuted where he grabs Christopher Daniels, holds him backwards for a minute, and then slings him behind him into the ropes and then hits him with that floor. Hmm. Uh, close line. It's a reference to the sister Abigail. The yeah, Bray Wyatt yeah. Did. And that's how Bray Wyatt set up the sister Abigail before, you know. And Luke Carper just changes it from a throw to a clothesline. I don't think that's necessary, especially since he st- or outright said he wants to distance his running of a cult from Bray Wyatt and doesn't want to draw comparisons. But yeah. he also he also said he wants to show WWE what the Wyatt family could have been if they had put some faith into them. Mm. And do you know why? Uh, wait, do you know the story uh, yet? He did. He talked about it on Talk is Jericho, like when he decided he was leaving WWE. Oh, I haven't listened to that one. I've heard it's a really good episode. It is. Um, so he was supposed to be at WrestleMania, or he was not scheduled for WrestleMania, so he texts Vince, and he's like, because he couldn't get in to see Vince, they kept holding him away, so he just texts Vince on his personal number, like, why am I not booked at WrestleMania? And Vince is like, why aren't you in the fucking Battle Royal, the Andre the Giant? And he's like, gee, boss, I don't know, it sounds like something you would want, or you should know more about than I would. And so Vince puts him in that, and then they had this plan to make him Sami Zayn's, like, bodyguard, uh, similar to, like, Diesel and uh, Shawn Michaels back in the 90s, and they didn't do it, and he was like, fuck this, fuck them, these people, I'm gonna ask for my release on Twitter, because he wanted to be able to control the narrative of right. what happened, because if he went to them privately, they could have just done whatever, but now he could say, I asked for my release, this is me taking control. And they didn't grant it. And instead put him in the Bludgeon Brothers, which went badly because they weren't taken seriously. Did you hear about the fucking spider? No, what happened? Okay, so for months they've been like building up Eric Rowan, trying to make him a singles monster. And so the gimmick they settled him with is he carries out like a pet cage covered in canvas cloth so you can't see what's inside it. Sure. And so for months you're just like, well, what's inside the cage? And if, like for the first two weeks you're like, what's inside the cage? This is going to be really cool. But then they built it for like months. Like they mm-hmm. built that tease for months. And so like no matter what's in that cage it will never be good enough for that build. Exactly. There's nothing you... And 
like he had people look in the cage and scream and run off stumbling and tripping over themselves. He had one person look in the cage and come back with a bloody face. And he finally revealed it to be an animatronic robot tarantula that was like three times bigger than a normal tarantula. Oh. And it's like clearly a robot. And like, it's like one step away from like, eep, boop, I am spider. Boop, boop. Yeah. And so everybody runs screaming as if it's real because they're selling it. And then, like, the next week, the baby face they're building to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania just comes out, takes the cage, sets it on the floor, and crushes it with the steel steps. Oof. And I'm like, regardless of whether he's a heel or a face, you just had somebody murder a pet, a beloved, cared-for pet on national TV, and hoped we would cheer for that. That's dark. And, like, somebody made the argument that you're looking at it from a literal standpoint instead of the standpoint of this is a bad story, here is the hero to end this bad story. Right. Um... (laughs) I'm, no, I can't. I can't sign off on that reading of this. I will. Plot. I will keep uh, having this conversation with you, but I think I'm gonna end the stream here. All right. All right. I don't know how many people even showed up. If You're it even ended up being you. <gasps> Am I? Yeah. Nice. Maybe. All right. Well, thanks to anybody. More like three sixteen. Praise it. Yeah. 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 Three sixteen day. Jesus. Um, okay, so thanks to anybody who watched this, and thanks to anybody who watches this after the fact. I will have much more to come now that I figured out how to use this Elgato. Smart. Good night.